Hi, and welcome to another episode of ECCB Connects, a production of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Governor of the ECCB, Timothy N.J. Antwine, marks the beginning of his second five-year term with a thanksgiving and dedication service. We'll share excerpts with you after the break. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Zena from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and you're watching ECCB Connects. Thanks for staying connected with us. The Monetary Council has approved the reappointment of Timothy N.J. Antwine as Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Governor Antwine says he is humbled and honored for the opportunity to continue to serve the region. He met virtually with staff and well-wishers to commence the first day of his new five-year term with prayers and thanksgiving. We thank you for Governor and for allowing him the opportunity to be able to serve your people again. And as we come during these economic times of instability, we pray, God, as the uncertainties that lie before us unfold, that you would give overwhelming grace to hold him up under the pressure of the challenges of the changing global economy. Grant wisdom that he would guide your people in this region through this current crisis. We pray against the spirit of fear that even now would seek to overwhelm decision-making and help him to be a good steward of the resources and be wise in knowing the difference between our wants and our needs. We pray that you would bless his support team, his wife and his children, who provide immediate support for him. And we pray, God, that you would give his team who work within the region generous hearts and make them good workers in your kingdom and give them a deep and abiding trust in you and the presence to know the pressures and strains so that they would ease his work. May you open your opportunities for this institution and for our region and furnish the resources that are needed to perform our duties. Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit will carry us through. And so we pray for your continued mercy and restoration for those who are suffering this economic fallout. And we pray the cooperation of those people and countries that have been blessed with prosperity, that they may marshal your good forces of charity and generosity to ease the plight of suffering. We thank you for all those who comprise the council. We pray that you would undergird them and that you would bless their decisions and policies. We end this prayer, God, by thanking you for prospering our spirits. And we pray that in the time to come, that your presence would fill us with joy, and we will give you thanks. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There will be mountains that I will have to climb. And there that I will have to fight but victory or defeat it's up to me to decide but how can I expect to win if I never try I just To leave me. Governor Antwine also reflected on some of the major accomplishments of the ECCB under his leadership over the past five years, which include development and implementation of the bank's first strategic plan, styled Transforming the ECCU Together, improvement in relationship with key partners and the public at large through the launch of the weekly public education program, ECCB Connects, and the annual country outreach missions. Steady improvement in the bank's financial performance. 
Establishment of New Institutions, Eastern Caribbean Asset Management Corporation, and the Eastern Caribbean Partial Credit Guarantee Corporation. Initiatives to support the youth. Launch of the new family of EC Polymer Notes. The Digital Currency Initiative, DCash, and greening of the ECCB Campus Initiative. Over the next five years, Governor Antwine recommits himself to the cause of building the region and transforming the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. He outlines aspects of a new strategic plan and encouraged staff to join him in this noble endeavor. We are going to be elaborating a strategic plan 2021-2026. At the moment, the strategic themes that we've identified are digital transformation, environmental, social, and corporate governance, financial stability, organizational effectiveness and development, and payment systems improvement and financial inclusion. We'll have more to say on those in the next few weeks. And our plan, our hope, is to launch a strategic plan in June of this year. So there will be, you have already been involved, many of you, but there'll be opportunity for you to have further input before we finalize and launch a strategic plan. In terms of our focus this year, um, obviously the strategic plan is front and center. But as you know, we have in fact received the approval on our recommendation of a program of action for recovery, resilience, and transformation of the ECCU. And that is a response, a regional response to the pandemic. And there are several themes in there, all of which pretty much are aligned with the strategic plan uh, that I've just mentioned, and which we will, of course, uh, launch in June, God willing. There are three areas I want to quickly highlight as immediate areas of focus for us in 2021 and moving forward. Digital transformation is going to be key, and um, our digital currency launch and by launch, we mean the public part of it because we are now in the closed pilot stage. Uh, we will, in fact, uh, have more to say on that. The matter of renewable energy and the need for us to triple our renewable energy over the next uh, 10 years or so, and particularly to see a significant advance over the next five. To scale up what we've done at the ECCB campus, uh, we believe that just as we have taken an ambition to be carbon neutral, to, re to hit net zero by 2022, we believe we need to see faster acceleration or faster work in this area, scaling up as it were in our member countries. Uh, we always say we do not want to, we want to practice what we preach. When we tell our governments to be fiscally prudent and to have buffers, we want to make sure that we have buffers. That's why we've built up our profitability and we have additional buffers. When we tell our governments we want to invest in renewable energy to reduce our carbon footprint, but more importantly, to save foreign exchange and to help us in foreign reserves management, we've done this at the campus. We want to also replicate in country. And when we talk about digital transformation, what we do with the digital currency is a very a singular but important project uh, to, re to really offer proof of concept of what could be and should be in our currency union. And you've heard me say this over and over again. What is a vision? A vision is what could be and should be. And that's always what we strive to be, do. And then the other area is uh, boosting food and nutrition security. I think the pandemic brings this into sharp focus, not just in terms of our over-reliance on, on external imports uh, for our food, but also in terms of our health, the need for us to eat healthy, the need for us to build back our economies, the need for us to strengthen the rural economy, the need for us to create stronger linkages between agriculture, uh, and tourism and our everyday economic life. And so the idea of reducing our food import bill by 25% over the next three years is in fact an ambitious goal that we wanna pursue as we build and boost food and nutrition security. So those are some of the things you can expect us to push uh, here at the bank from a policy perspective, and of course in terms of some of the projects that we will undertake. Having said all of this, we cannot achieve this as an organization because as the saying goes, organizations do not accomplish anything. It's the people who do. It's the people who do. So 
if we're going to be impactful in the next five years, we shall be competent, yet caring, prudent, but proactive, imaginative, and industrious. In other words, colleagues, we shall not be caretakers. We will take care of business, but we shall not be caretakers. And I hope you recognize the difference. A caretaker is passive and reactive. But when we take care of business, we lean in, we lean forward, we embrace our realities, and we are active, proactive, and creative. I want you to join me. I recommit to you today as governor. I fully rededicate and recommit myself to the task at hand and to the cause of building our region and transforming our currency union. And I want you to join me in that noble endeavor. If you truly believe that you want to make a difference, you want to make a mark and leave a le lasting legacy, then I want you to raise your hand, your right hand with me. Right now, everyone, all members of staff, wherever you are, raise your right hand with me. Let us affirm today that we are going to go all in and fully commit to serving this region we love so much. And so let us repeat what we shall be, a declaration of who we are and who we will be in the next five years. Competent, yet caring, prudent, but proactive, imaginative, and industrious. If you are new to the ECCB family or recently joined, you have an opportunity to determine what story you want to tell in this bank and in service to our region. You have that opportunity to determine what story you want to tell. If you are mid-career in the bank, you've been here for a while, maybe 10, 15 years, it is not too late for you to change the narrative about your role and impact in this institution. In other words, I am conveying to you a sense of renewed hope, time and opportunity to still make a difference. Whatever went, went let bygones be bygones. Let's move forward. And finally, if you are in your final years at this institution, I want to implore you to make your final years your finest years. Make your final years your finest years. There's something in this for all of us. And at the end of the day, as I've always found with public service, when we give, we receive far much more than we give. Because the scripture is correct. In giving, we receive. And I'm not merely speaking in financial terms. Frankly, that's not what I'm talking about. But the fulfillment of contributing to something bigger than ourselves and making a difference in this region and having a real sense that our work matters and that when we get up in the morning, we're doing something not just for our families, important as that is, but for our region. I want you to join me uh, in this noble endeavor over the next five years. It's been my pleasure to serve you. I'm humbled and honored by another opportunity to continue to lead. Uh, and I really, truly look forward to being a better leader, a better governor in this next term. Whatever we did together is now history, good history, but the opportunity is in front of us. And I want us to embrace this new season with optimism, with a sense of real opportunity and urgency an urgency. And like I said before, I treat every term as if it's my last, because that allows me not to get complacent or to relax, but to pursue every day with a sense of urgency. That is how I lived the first five years. That is how I would live the next five years, God willing. Treat each term as my last and go for it. I just
brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far. Oh, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. You're watching ECCB Connects. We've come to the end of another episode of ECCB Connects. Thank you so much for watching. We invite you to connect with us next week for another program.